Hello, my name is Annie Ranavera, and welcome to my presentation regarding analysis of research on the topic of technology in ESL and EFL classroom settings. So for my research, I looked at these journals in the Education Research Complete Database, and I searched the years 2013 to 2014, and I scanned all these abstracts for relevant information regarding technology in the classroom. So these were the journals that had the most number of relevant articles, and especially the Computer Assisted Language Learning and Teaching Journal, as well as the Language Learning and Technology Journal. So after scanning and reading about 50 plus abstracts, um, I came upon a lot of new words um, that I hadn't heard of before doing this research. So I thought it was relevant to go over these terms that were prominent in the abstracts. So digital literacy is kind of self-explanatory. It's a term that describes a person's competence level with using technology and calls an acronym for computer assisted language learning. MAL is an acronym for mobile assisted language learning. So kind of for using smartphones in the classroom. Uh, OER stands for Open Education Resources, and it's like an internet resource where teachers can share lesson plans, ideas, etc. Uh, IELT is Internet Assisted Language Learning. Basically, it's uh, integrating internet as a resource in the classroom. The interactive whiteboard is what we have at PSU, which is a whiteboard, a projector, and a computer with the internet. Uh, blended learning is uh, where technology is woven into the curricula. And MOOCs are free, massively open online courses. BYOD stands for Bring Your Own Device. And Animated Pedagogical Agent is basically a cartoon that is mostly for kids, helps facilitate learning. So from all the abstracts that I read, these were the big benefits that I saw popped up. These are the upside of implementing technology in the classroom. So technology has the capacity to promote autonomous learning. A lot of the tasks um, are independent based and so learners um, take more ownership over their own learning because they have to with technology sometimes. Um, students see technology as useful and motivating. Um, so those are really important um, concepts tied to technology. Also, building a website can promote critical thinking, higher, higher thinking order skills. Um, learners can also work collaboratively, especially with the writing process using wikis. And learners have the opportunity to do tasks that are meaningful and real life kind of based um, assignments. Also, that using technology can facilitate cultural understanding because just simply the amount of access you have um, when using the internet to different cultures. So these are a bunch of tools that were mentioned in the abstracts that I read. Since our field is changing so much with the access to technology, um, we can take advantage of these new things. So I think we all know what YouTube, Facebook, Skype are, but I wanted to kind of go over some new ones that I learned about while doing the research. Um, PBWorks is an online teacher training um, website where teachers can collaborate and share files. Um, Moodle is a site that is basically a course management system. Ning is a platform where you can launch your own social network. Um, Ezersize is a speed reading program online to help improve reading proficiency. VoiceThread is an interactive collaborative sharing um, tool. So Students and teachers can share images, documents, videos, and comment on those um, in audio formats. 
Also, we have Mango Conversations, which is kind of like a Rosetta Stone that helps improve kind of uh, proficiency in grammar. And finally, the Brain Shark is a site that has free podcasts and narrated, narrated slideshows for students to listen to and watch. So we can't talk about the good without addressing the bad. So these are some of the negative themes that came up in the research. Um, so number one is access. Not everybody has access to internet and has the money to pay for smartphones and tablets. So this is a major issue um, when we're trying to implement technology use in the classroom. Maybe it's not appropriate for everybody. Um, also, we see some resistance on teachers' part to want to use technology in the classroom either because the teacher has lack of experience or kind of a personal dislike for technology. Um, we've already touched on affordability. Um, another thing is that teachers have a hard time deciding what is too much use of technology, what's too little in the classroom. So there's kind of a difficult difficulty in striking the right balance there. And synchronous tools like Skype uh, can be kind of logistically difficult to use when you're trying to communicate with, let's say, a class in Europe. Um, it's kind of hard to find the right time that works for everybody. So from all the abstracts that I read, I chose to um, focus on one article in particular. And I chose this article because well, it was shorter, but also um, it sounded really interesting because it was interviewing um, or getting information from new student teachers in a TESOL master program. So I thought it would be beneficial for us to learn how another cohort was reacting to implementing technology in the classroom. So this article um, is by a few I think they were actually students at Columbia University and their article is called Use of Technology in an Adult Intensive English Program, Benefits and Challenges. So the study was exploratory and they used questionnaires and online surveys using Google Forms and they also had a follow-up questionnaire. Um, they used Excel to calculate percentages and averages and they coded um, their data qualitatively um, using open online docs. Uh, the main questionnaire consisted of five multiple choice questions and five open-ended questions. And the participants were 39 fellow MATSL students who taught three days a week at the IEP at Columbia University. So the major results from the study showed that about 70% of the students reported they were proficient in using technology like YouTube and Skype, IM and blogs, but only 30% of um, these student teachers were actually using these skills in the classroom. So the problem they recognized was that technology is prevalent for students, but they're not using their knowledge and they're learning about it in their teacher training programs, but they're still not using it. So the question was, how can they change that? And their suggestions were that um, teaching trainer programs should really try to integrate technology into the curriculum more so that future teachers would feel more comfortable with using it. Also, they felt that having a mentor that was technologically skilled would be beneficial for uh, future teachers. And also, they thought that making technology use mandatory in some way, for example, like an e-portfolio like we do um, for our program here, um, would help student teachers um, feel more comfortable. So the major benefits that came up um, in this article kind of mirrored the benefits in the overall um, themes I saw in all the other abstracts. Um, so basically benefits, experienced teachers feel really comfortable using technology like PowerPoint, Ning, and uh, PBWorks. Um, it provides more flexibility for teachers in the classroom. For example, you can look up uh, a picture of a pine cone rather than explaining what a pine cone is. Um, it's really engaging for students to use technology and it's a way to integrate the authentic materials into the classroom. Um, some challenges were that uh, novice teachers thought it was too time consuming to try and put technology into their lesson plans. They were too focused on um, 
making their lesson plans um, polished and so it was hard for them to put those technologies into the plans. Um, some people, teachers, have a personal dislike for social networking so they think it's not worthwhile and beginners, students, um, often lack access to computers and have low digital literacy skills. Also, technology is seen as a poor replacement for face-to-face -face communication. So, in sum, from the article that I read in detail and all the abstracts that I read, I think that even though we're proficient users, of technology, um, new teachers can be reluctant and so we need to find a way to change that. Also teaching training programs need to implement technology into the curriculum more. I think we're doing a really good job right now at PSU actually. And also access to technology is pretty difficult and not easy for everybody to have. So thank you for watching and uh, see you in class.